Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about software testing. Seven principles of software testing. Software testing is the process of checking the quality, functionality and performance of a software product before launching. To do software testing, testers either interact with software manually or execute test scripts to find bugs and errors, ensuring that the software works as expected. Now I'll talk about seven principles of software testing. Testing shows presence of defects. Exhaustive testing is not possible. Early testing. Defect clustering. Pesticide paradox. Testing is context dependent. Absence of errors fallacy. It's important that you achieve optimum test results while conducting software testing without deviating from the goal. But how? You determine that you are following the right strategy for testing. For that, you need to stick to some basic testing principles. Here are the common seven testing principles that are widely practiced in the software industry. To understand this, consider a scenario where you are moving a file from folder A to folder B. Think of all possible ways you can test this. Apart from usual scenarios, you can also test the following conditions. Trying to move the file when it is open, you don't have the security rights to paste the file in folder B. Folder B is on a shared drive and storage capacity is full. Folder B already has a file with same name, in fact the list is endless. Or suppose you have 15 input fields to test. Each having 5 possible values, the number of combinations to be tested would be 5 into 15. If you had to test the entire possible combination, project execution time and cost would rise exponentially. We need certain principles and strategies to optimize the testing effort. Now I am discussing in detail the 7 principles. Yes, exhaustive testing is not possible. Instead, we need the optimal amount of testing based on the risk assessment of your application. And many of the question is, how do you determine this risk? To answer, let's do an exercise. In your opinion, the operation is most likely to cause your operating system to fail. So, if you were testing this operating system, you would realize that defects are likely to be found in multitasking activity and need to be tested thoroughly, which brings us to our next principle, that is defect clustering. Defect clustering which states that small number of modules contain most of the defects detected. This is the application of Pareto principles to software testing approximately 80% of the problems are found in 20% of the modules. By experience, you can identify each risky module. But this approach has its own problems. If the same tests are repeated over and over again, eventually the same test cases will no longer find new bugs. Next is pesticide paradox. Repetitive use of same pesticide mix to eradicate insects during the farming will over time lead to insects developing resistance to the pesticide thereby ineffective of pesticides on insects. The same applies to software testing. If the same set of repetitive tests are conducted, a method will be useless for discovering new defects. To overcome this, the test cases need to be regularly reviewed and revised, adding new and different test cases to help find more defects. Testers cannot simply depend on existing test techniques. He must look out continually to improve the existing methods to make testing more effective. But even after all this sweat and hard work in testing, you can never claim your product is bug free. To drive home this point, let's see this video of public launch of 98. Testing shows the presence of defects. Here, testing principle states that testing talks about the presence of defects and don't talk about absence of defects. That software testing reduces probability of undiscovered defects remaining in the software but even if no defects are found, it's not a proof of correctness. But what if you work hard extra, taking all precautions and make your software 99% bug free and the software does not meet the needs and requirements of the clients? This leads to our next principle which states that absence of error. Absence of error is a fallacy. It is possible that software which is 99% bug free is still unusable. This can be the case if the system is tested thoroughly for the wrong requirement or the testing is not mere finding defects but also check that software addresses the business needs. Absence of error is a fallacy that is finding and fixing defects does not help 
the system build is unusable and does not fulfill the user needs and requirements.